Beep, 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 beep. Today, ladies and gentle peeps from the court of the EDI Jester, I bring you an article from the Times uh, speaking on Oxfam's disgraceful behaviour. I was also interested to see that it looks like there may be an investigation by the Charities Commission into Oxfam. They need to do the same with everyone. All of them. We've got mermaids on the rack, haven't we? Stonewall next. Do you remember a few years back we have kids' company with that? Batman, Camilla, Wobble Bottom, whatever her name was. She was a bit of a fraudster, wasn't she? Or got it right. I don't think she was, really. I think she was just a good person that went slightly awry. Um, the cult of the personality scene. Now, so what we've got here, the view from the Times, on what happened with Oxfam's video. Now, I don't know if you saw this video. They took it down, actually. Somebody will have it somewhere, but they took it down. Absolutely disgusting. I've seen some stuff in my time, but this took the bloody biscuit. Um, it was blatantly vile. Um, racist homophobic, misogynistic, from Oxfam, of all people. Uh, so the, the Times has waded in with an interesting little article that I'll pop in the doobers for you. It says that Ofcom has entered the poisonous trans debate with a venomous slur against the writer and women's rights campaigner, J.K. Rowling. It should junk its woke ideology and get on with helping the world's poor. I think it's at the point where it's too far gone. I think it needs shutting down. I think it's the same with all of them. Shut Stonewall, shut Oxfam, shut any... I mean, the Royal College of Psychiatry. Come on! When the psychiatrists need a psychiatrist, you know the world is full of them. <laughs> <laughs> Among the most poisonous images put out by Der Sturmer, the Nazi propaganda newspaper, was its standard cartoon of a Jew. Ugly, grotesque and threatening. We know these pictures. We know what they look like. That a British aid agency should today resort to the same kind of venomous slur decides, d defies belief. Right? <clears throat> the leering cartoon of an anti-trans woman distorted to resemble and demonise J.K. Rowling was created for a video, since deleted, released by Oxfam to mark the start of Pride Month and show solidarity with LGBT campaigners. It's not... People, you know, we need to start saying this every time. It's nothing to do with the LG. It's everything to do with the LGB. It's to do with the TQ, right? Forget the B. I don't care what the B do. They can do what they like, right? But it's the LG I worry about. It's the TQ that are the problem. Start saying so. This is a trans and queer movement. It's got nothing to do with lesbian and gay people. So stop pretending it has. The woman was wearing a turf badge, trans exclusionary radical feminist. And was gazing with demonic red eyes at rainbow colored figures, symbolizing lesbian, gays, bisexuals and trans victims of her prejudice. Right? So they have to force team us. The lesbians and gays have got nothing to do with the trans and the queers. Right? There is no LGBTQ of any derivation. Somebody put on Twitter, which one is it? And it was like a list of ten different selections of the alphabet, hands, knees and bumps, daisy people. Just say it. It's not. It's, got, it's, it's the trans queer movement. That's what it is. Nothing to do with us. Right? The outrage expressed by those lumped together with the extremists pursuing a misogynistic and intolerant vendetta had hardly been softened by off, 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 Oxfam's feeble apology for its mistake and its defiance and insistence, and insistence that it listened to concerns. The article continues. What is the justification for an aid agency founded more than 80 years ago and dedicated to relieving starvation and poverty around the world to wade into today's culture wars? It's claimed that it has a duty to highlight the lack of safety that LGBT people feel across the world. Is that the reason thousands of people donate money and relief supplies? Shop at Oxfam charity outlets? Or applaud frontline workers risking their lives amid wars, disease, starvation and natural disasters? What is Ofcom doing to combat the oppression of gay people abroad, such as the law just passed in Uganda that mandates death for some homosexuals? Will anti-turf cartoons help the thousands of facing similar repressions in Nigeria and much of the Middle East? Only five years ago, Oxfam was exposed for covering up the scandal of its aid workers, sexually exploiting earthquake survivors in Haiti. Official inquiries revealed widespread bullying and toxic work environments, but senior officials were allowed to slide away with impunity. Every year since, there, since then, there have been fresh allegations of sexual misconduct at its charity shops, in African refugee camps or in the Democratic Republic of Congo, as a result of the public disgrace, donations plunged and the government distanced itself from the agency's activities. The Charity Commission humiliatingly opposed a 19-month supervision order to investigate safeguard failings. Now they go for the ultimate safeguard failing, TQ+. It's 
I, it's beyond the pale, isn't it? It's beyond the pale. Righteous cause mentality. I am right, therefore I will sacrifice anything. Righteous cause mentality. Right, so clearly Oxfam now believe it has to show itself zealously pursuing equality in all of its more radical interpretations. It's not equality. The times is equity. It has, however, made itself hostage to some of the most risible manifestations of the new culture. It has published a guide on trans rights and inclusion, suggesting that radical feminism is supporting the root cause of sexual violence. What? Really? Radical feminism? Right. So women, women, women are the cause of their own sexual violence. That's your asking for it, isn't it? Oh, she was asking for it. Is that what that is? Or is it just me? She asked for it. These bastards. <clears throat> the reason that, that the reason that it, it is supporting the root cause of sexual violence is because it centres on privileged white women. There's critical race theory. So you know you've got a lot trans queer critical race theory. The whole the whole fetid pile of dog shit that is critical social justice. A new 90, 92 pages of inclusive language. Oh, for the love of God. Somebody's being paid to do this by money that you donate to Oxfam, which incidentally you shouldn't do anymore. Stop giving them any money. The 92-page inclusive language briefing mandates linguistic orthodoxy on all Oxfam staff. They must not talk about prostitutes but use the phrase sex worker. And the words father and mother are out because they imply gendered roles that could upset trans people. The term, head, the term headquarters implies a col colonial power dynamic and no one should talk of standing up for Ukraine as this is prejudicial to the disabled. It's metastasized into the very bones of the organization, the same as it is done in many schools, universities, government departments, uh, certainly the civil service, HMRC, DWP. And we need a huge public inquiry and we need hit squads, literally linguistic hit squads to go in linguistic and ontological hit squad. What would you call that? I don't know. A witch hunt, probably, wouldn't you? It'd be awfully naughty. Get them out. The whole thing's metastasized. You're going to need to get people who understand how this looks when it appears. Right? Because they hide it. You've got to get them to look. Where is it? It's like the precise removal of multiple tumours from the body, but from the body cultural. That's what it is. Ugh. Five years after its tawdry behaviour in the field, Oxfam is now accused of a different kind of repressive hounding of, 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 on a volunteer who defended J.K. Rowling after it was suggested her book should no longer be sold in Oxfam shops. This is pettiness combined with a vindictive culture that undermines the very idealism and moral commitment that surrounded the original Oxford Committee for Famine Relief. Oxfam has now edited and republished the offending video. This hardly suggests a change of priorities. Oxfam has lost the plot. It needs to recover, rediscover its core mission, fighting poverty and starvation. None of these organisations, from universities to schools to whatever it may be, your local knitting circle, none of them, are going to change until they are forced to change. And the only thing that can force them to change is us, the public. It's people waking up and going, hang on a minute, I smell power and oppression bollocks. Because that's what it is, power and oppression bollocks. If you can spot the power and oppression bollocks, oh, they're all victims and victims are oppressors. If you can spot that, you can call it out. And then they'll get really nasty because they don't like it when you touch their power and oppression bollocks. They get really nasty once you get wise to that. Don't bring your power and oppression bollocks here. I'm not listening to you. I don't see through a power and oppression bollocks lens. Go away. We're not doing that. Right? So it means we've all got to wake up. Even, you know, even if you don't give a you know, monkey's toss about the trans and queer stuff. If you want to live in a world where power and oppression becomes everything, just, just keep quiet. Because that's all you've got to do. Because that world where power and oppression and everything is absolutely, absolutely, right? The yellow lines on the side of the road that lead to Mao. Right? That lead to North Korea. That lead to communism. That lead to totalitarianism. So keep quiet. Keep quiet. You'll be alright. You'll be fine. You'll own nothing and you'll be glad about it. See you later, people.